No. So, um, I spent the first year of my YouTube career trying to convince you all that I wasn't an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, and I sort of, I never scripted anything, which is why I say um too much, but I was always very careful about things like swearing and being really honest and whatever, because I really don't like arguing with people, I don't like fighting, I abhor any kind of confrontation. Um, but the reality is that when you start graduate school and your graduate career is futile, you become an alcoholic. That's yes. just true. Yes. <laughs> right? Allie has a master's degree. I do have a master's degree in alcohol got me through. What do you do with your master's degree, Allie? It actually is on a shelf in a closet collecting dust. Mine is propping up my bookcase. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd pull the, the phone out and make a video because we're having a conversation over a bottle of wine about... This is the second bottle of wine. Well, the first bottle of wine had only a little bit in it. Um, but... Shh. <laughs> we're having a conversation about how we got into Wicca and how we interacted with our parents when we first started, and where where we are as a result. And anyway, it's really, it's an interesting conversation. And I know a lot of you guys are younger than Allie and I. So, Allie and I got involved in Wicca in the late 90s, right? 1998. Yeah, 98. Um, the craft had been out for a couple of years. Oh, I hadn't even um, seen the craft at that time. Okay, yeah. I, I didn't see it until 98. Um, Silver Ravenwolf Teen Witch came out, I think, in 98. Maybe 99. But, or, so, anyway, Silver Ravenwolf was becoming big at the end of the 90s. Um, Hutton had just come out with Triumph of the Moon, but nobody carried that. And nobody read it. Nobody cared. Uh, they do now. But at the time, especially because we were, well, you were, you're, you've got a couple years on me. I was 13. Mm -hmm. I was I was 18 and a freshman in college in 1998, and one of my friends in the dorms um, gave me Raven Grimasi's Wicked Mysteries, and that was my first book. I knew it was horrible as I read it, but it interested me enough that another friend gave me her copy of Wicca for the Solitary Practitioner to borrow. And I copied the entire book into a notebook, because I was too dumb to go to a bookstore and buy my own copy. Well, and see, I did something similar. I, I absconded with my friend's copy of, um, of the Cunningham book also, and I also hand copied it. And it was because, as thirteen or fourteen or whatever it was, it just never occurred to me that I could have my own copy. Um, I had a, a meager allowance, but. Um, I don't know. I, my very first book was Teen Witch, okay, which I've said in videos before. Um, and one of the first things that Silver Ravenwolf does in Teen Witch is warn you about the potential reaction that your parents are going to have, right? She kind of wigs you out a little bit um, because, you know, there's that introduction for teens and then introduction for parents. And I don't know that this was her intention or not, but it freaked me out. And I was also getting into it with a couple of girls who did come from very conservative families, uh, one of whom came from a very conservative family, and she legitimately did have to be concerned about whether or not her parents knew. So I sort of assumed that my parents would be upset. I figured out really quickly that my parents did not care at all, um, but in the meantime I was smuggling my friend's books and hand copying them into a composition book. Which is one of the reasons why I'm so unsympathetic to people who are like, Oh, but I can't afford books. Well, I didn't have books either. And now I have a pile of composition books where I have hand copied things while at Barnes and Noble Ditto. or whatever. I still have my notebook from 1998 where I copied Wicker for the Solitary Practitioner. In fact, I showed it to you. It was that blue spiral yeah. bound. Well, and you've seen mine, haven't you? Oh, I'm sure I have. Yeah. Um, anyway, we were talking about... Our, our forays into Wicca and kind of where we are now and where we started and I know I've said this in videos before I've made the joke that whether or not you like Silver Ravenwolf and I know that people have very strong feelings one way or the other um, and for good reasons uh, both camps have very good reasons for the way that they they feel um, but um, However we feel about Silver Ravenwolf, her impact on Wicca in the late 90s and early 2000s is unquestionable. I would not be involved in Wicca 
were it not for Teen Witch. And I was able to read Teen Witch as a 13 year old and turn out to be a very conservative Gardnerian. <laughs> so, like, and I hope to someday be on my way also. <laughs> right? So, um, like clearly, I, I was watching a video from um, the Four Queens, who I just discovered the other day, um, thanks to um, a video from Sage, and then um, seeing some of you guys mention her too. And anyway, I watched I watched one of her recent videos, and she said something about how we needed to give Seekers more credit. She was talking about whether or not people um, do damage to the community when they purport to know things that they don't, when they set themselves up, up as teachers, when they're not qualified, etc. And she said that we need to give spiritual seekers more credit. And I completely agree. I think that... I don't think that it is a crime for anyone to read a book like Teen Witch or anything by Silver Ravenwolf and just assume that they're broken. Like, <laughs> like oh, we're going to have to un unlearn all of this stuff and she's doing it wrong and blah, blah, blah. Like, I managed. Allie managed. My three Silver Ravenwolf books. Here's Allie's bookshelf. Thorn will show you. Ooh. Those three books have so many bookmarks in them. Look at this. And those have been there since the late 90s when I bought them. And I find myself once or twice a year going back and looking at them. Yeah, I, uh, sometimes when this happens to me around Halloween, I think because, as I imagine, like many of us, we discovered Wicca close to Halloween time because that's when all the, like, that's when the end caps are out at the bookstores, that's when all the spooky movies are on. For me, that was the first time I saw The Craft, shortly after it was released. Um, and you know what, like, when you're, however old I was, like, 96, so like, 11 or 12, or whatever, I don't, I can't do math, guys. Um, <laughs> that's because you were an English major. I was an English major. I don't do math. Um, you know, Halloween is when I get the most excited about witchcraft, for whatever reason. There are many reasons, right? And I know I'm not alone in that. And I have absolutely sat down and revisited To Ride a Silver Broomstick. Not because I think that it's like full of wisdom or it's like, you know, feeding my soul or anything necessarily, but just because it's nostalgic. Oh, it totally is. It makes me excited. It's sort of like, it's sort of like, you know how when Ninja Turtles was suddenly out on DVD and you could buy it at Target and you're just like, oh shit. Yeah, Leonardo was my jams, right? <laughs> That's how I feel about Silver Ravenwolf. It's sort of like how now you can watch My Little Pony again, right? Like the 80s are back, everybody, except kind of with better, a weirder maybe. fandom. But anyway. Well, and I remember my second semester of my freshman year, so we're in 1999 now, um, there was this girl whose name I cannot remember, but I went to her house and visited her off campus, and in her bedroom she had a cupboard that was underneath the stairway of their house. Kind of like the cupboard that Harry Potter lived in, right? Mm -hmm. And it was her witch cupboard, and she kept all of her witchy supplies in there, and she had her silver raven wolf books in there. She had like herbs and oil, you know, all that stuff. And I thought it was the coolest fucking thing I had ever seen in my life. And I wanted a witchy cupboard after that. Oh, yeah. And one of the earliest chapters in To Ride a Silver Broomstick... She talks about having, like... It's like chapter two. Yes. <laughs> like, chapter two is, like, how to stock your witchy cabinet. Yes. You're just like, whoa, Silver Ravenwolf, I don't know where you came from, but tell me more about this cabinet. Yes, yes. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so we've been sitting here reminiscing about some of our books, and... You know, it's funny because every generation is like, oh, well, you knew people, you don't even know what it was like, right? Because we didn't have as many books and blah, blah, blah. Like, right, when, I, when I'm hanging out with, my, with elders in my community and they're like, oh, well, we used to go to Magical Child in New York and then blah, 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 blah. Like, right, and all that stuff is true. And now I find that we're doing that where oh, yeah. it used to be you would go to Barnes & Noble if you had a Barnes & Noble in your town, which you probably didn't. Which I did not. Right, Walden Books. 
I what lived in a have? town where we didn't have a bookstore. I had to drive an hour to get to a bookstore. Yeah, we had Walden Books, and eventually we got Barnes & Noble. And when you went, there was the New Age section, and your choices were Raven Grimassi's Wiccan Mysteries, oh. the Scott Cunningham books, a couple of Silver Ravenwolf books. J.D. Conway. Um, yes, and then or there was DJ whatever. Conway. DJ, whatever. There was DJ Conway. She's dumb, so. You could get Wicca, The Complete Craft, and you could get, like, the Animal Magic book. And, um, you could get Cunningham's The Truth About Witchcraft Today. And I remember The Pocket Guide to Wicca. I, I just, like, those were your choices. There was not the vast array of multiple shelves. You couldn't go online and order from... Like, there was, there was no, no internet. There was no Amazon.com <laughs> back then. Right. And um, remember, I remember discovering GeoCities with, like, the flashing gifts stolen and off of the Robin Wood Angel webpage. Fire and Tripod. Like, yeah. those of you who are young have no idea. And then Witchbox came out. And the witch's voice was like... See, now it's weird because I meet, I meet people, especially young people. I say this like I'm old. But, like, people in their, teen, in their teens... And I go, oh, the witch's voice, you have a listing. And they go, what's that? And that was the big thing. That oh was how you God. found that people. That was how you found people. Um, oh, I used to scour that thing oh, in yeah. college. Praying that I would find someone. Because it, it's alphabetical by city. So you have to, like, scroll through to get to, like, your town and your yep. state. And then it's, like, every listing of every... Yeah, and you have to, like, click on each one to read their profile and... Yeah. Whatever. And you could spend an hour and not find, like, a single person that you would even want to talk to. Yeah. And now it's so easy. Like, Pig and Pride Day did not exist when we oh, were growing no, up. No, no. Um, so, in, in some ways, I'm really envious of people who are getting started now. In other ways, I'm definitely not because, God, the... Just being bombarded by... I don't know, everything. And Wicca looks an awful lot like church. No. Yeah, some of it does. <laughs> like, um, anyway, um, so that's what we're doing, being nostalgic. So, those of you who remember GeoCities <laughs> should... Which should, is now archived on the interwebs, by the way. Praise Jesus. Because <laughs> that needs to be preserved for all time. Yes, it does. Our, you could go to Robin Wood's I'm webpage. I'm sure my GeoCities page from the late 90s is still out there somewhere. I had um, an AOL homepage. I never had AOL. I remember getting AOL. I was the last person in my class to get it. I thought I was just the shit. Oh, man. And you had, like, AOL groups, right? And I would start these groups. So my, my Wiccan career has largely consisted of me trying to start groups and other people going, yeah, that's a great idea, and then never showing up again. Right. Allie can vouch for this. Oh, yeah. And uh, it turns out that that's just the nature of starting any kind of group. But that's what I would do. I would start these, like, teen witch AOL groups, and they would implode immediately, and I would be really disappointed, and anyway. Then I would, in order to make myself feel better, I would read the chapter and to write a little broomstick about the witch cupboard. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys are having a good night. We're having a good night. Yes. Okay. Bye.